in MFRT today, you are roughly 750 people with 18,000 crore of AUM. Now, how do we convert this MFRT into a sustainable thing? This is the presentation. So today, if we see IFAs, you and me, we are a fragmented community. We have associations like FIFA, MFRT, DFDA, but do people hear us? Hand on heart, answer is no. There are about 75,000 IFS registered with MFI, but 10,000 people actually do business. And there are only 1,200 people who get more than 50 lakh rupee by way of commission check. So effectively, all others are doing thank pass. Is SEBI asking our opinion, valuing our judgment when we are, when they draft regulation? Answer is no. Most IFAs are location specific. The guy who is based in Dhanbad is focused in Dhanbad. At best, he will go to Ranchi. The guy who is focused in Nasik is focused in Nasik. At best, he will go to Pune. But we don't have pan-India presence. How many of you are going to bring your own next generation into your business? I'm, I'm the second generation in my father. Uh, my son very good, but how many examples are like this? I was recently in someone's house in, I'm not disclosing the location, and he actually told me that, Nilesh, why don't you advise my son-in-law to join my business? I have 500 crore AUM. My revenue Sir. is 10 times more than what my son-in-law is earning, and yet he doesn't want to join my business. N number of times when I have gone to meet IFS, I'm not finding their second generation into business. They are looking for something else. You are a rare exception. <laughs> Agree. So is there a better way out? What can we do to create value? And I can assure you that all of you collectively get 1.25 crore for the business which you have built. It is 750 into 1.5 crore, roughly equal to 900 crore. That's the value of MFRT. And it can grow over a period of time. So what you need to do to realize that 1,000 crore valuation, we can learn that from and pardon me, you might feel that I'm Gujarati and I'm only pushing Gujarati. But my knowledge is more about Gujaratis rather than other community. That's the only reason why I push Gujarati. That's an experience from the Amul, what Gujarati farmers created for value creation. If you see in 1960s, the Indian dairy industry was completely dependent upon imports. We had to depend upon Scandinavian countries' milk powder, which was being supplied to us at free of cost. We were the largest importer of dairy product in the world. The story of Ashwasthama, where he was given milk by his mother by mixing flour into water, was true even in 1960 and 1970. Majority of the kids were not drinking milk. They were drinking probably what Ashwasthama was drinking in Mahabharat days. Forty percent of our milk consumption was through imports. We were only producing 17 million tons of milk. And our per capita consumption of milk was as low as 124 grams per day. What was the problem? Farmers were poor, milk was perishable commodity, 
They were hostage to the multinational companies, and some of you might remember this, Paulson. It was the largest butter company in India. Not owned by Indian, but owned by foreigner. What did these two gentlemen do? One, Tribhuvandas Patel, who was visionary. And second, Dr. Burgess Kurian, who is now called Milkman of India, who was executioner. These two gentlemen came together to organize farmers. They created a corporate entity which gave a short quality. As IFS, you don't have to worry about mis-selling. 99% of IFS, and I might be wrong in excluding that one person, they never do mis-selling. Unlike a bank RM who doesn't, who won't sit in that chair after six months or 12 months, here is third generation serving the same family. If your third generation is the, in the business, I'm sure your client's third generation is also serviced by you. Or fourth generation. So you can imagine the difference between a bank RM versus an IFA. So unlike Amul, which had to go and establish itself, saying that we can provide you quality of milk as good as Scandinavian country, you don't have to worry about that. Other competitors have to copy you in terms of quality assurance. They adopted technology. Milk was a perishable commodity. It was getting wasted. It was getting unutilized. Amul created that mechanism through which technology was leveraged and milk became a tradable commodity. This is where IFS are at a serious disadvantage. Some of you are great in utilizing technology, but most of you are not great in utilizing technology. Amul created products extension. From milk, they moved to butter. From butter, they moved to cheese. From cheese, they moved to ice cream. From ice cream, they moved to ghee. And now they have moved even to pizzas. Most of the IFS here in this room are selling monolithic product, only mutual fund. Mutual fund sahi hai. But that doesn't mean that you should restrict only to mutual fund. You need to go into multiple products. Amul brought professionalization. I mean, it was no longer dealing with a farmer. It was dealing with a company which was as good as multinational company. Clearly, IFS also need professionalization. Amul shaped regulations. They took head on all the multinational companies which were influencing India's regulation. They turned the entire ship reverse way in their favor. Most importantly, Amul, Amul was always focused about client centricity. They did care for their farmers, they did care for everyone else, but they were also focused on consumers. And that's why Amul today is India's largest FMCG company. Neither Baba Ramdev's Patanjali, nor Hindustan Unilever, nor ITC. These are not the largest Indian FMCG company. The largest Indian FMCG company is Amul. Their turnover is more than $4 billion. And obviously, Amul's story is not about just Ribuandas Patel and Burkis Kurian. It's also about the people who played a role. And if you watched a movie called Manthan, there was this famous dialogue by Nasiruddin Sa, Sisodi apni hai apni, ye society hamari hai. And what have they created? Amul has made India world's largest manufacturer of milk. From 40% imports to now exporting milk, butter, cheese, ghee, shrikhan, everything to the rest of the world. It's more than $4 billion turnover, the largest FMCG company. Hindustan Unilever, whose CEO and chairman gets lots of recognition, they are not the largest. Amul, whose CEO doesn't even get recognized. How many people know who is Amul's CEO? Not many people will know. He's a Sardarji called Mr. Sodi. He runs India's largest FMCG company. It's a fantastic success. And who are the owners of this Amul? 3.6 million farmers. If Amul was ever listed, 
this 3.6 million farmers might become millionaires. So clearly, farmers created this stream because they had a vision in the form of Tribhuvan Das Patil, their mission in terms of joint commitment, their commitment to the cause, and finally they executed everything through Vargis Kuriyan and so many other people we after him. The same thing was done in Mumbai by housewives, and you might would have heard this company called Lichat Papad. It's cooperative of housewives making papad, and their turnover is today more than 1,000 crore plus. Can we do something similar for IFAs? The example is that this has happened all over the world, be it US, be it Europe, be it Australia. IFAs have come together to form a cooperative union or a company or a platform. And one of the examples is the Shadford Group of Australia. If you do a Google search on them, it's a combination of 14 different companies coming together. Which were these 14 different companies? They were all, in our parlance, IFA Association of Dhanbad, IFA Association of Ranchi, IFA Association of Ahmedabad, IFA Association of Coimbatore. They all came together. Of course, in Australia, there are not more than 14 cities, so they could not have created 120 or 140 things. All those IFAs came together to set up a large company called Shadford Group. And they were selling mutual funds, they were providing various other services. Over a period of time, that group became part of what we call BSC 100 or NSC 100 index. So they are part of Australian mainline index. And value of that company was roughly 670 million in 2014. Today they have gone and further become part of a bank. And the members have kept on creating value. If you see most parts of the world, and the largest part is America, there are companies which are nothing but association of IFAs. There are companies which are nothing but some other form of union of IFAs. And the assets they manage is what a large mutual fund in India is managing today. 20 billion, 15 billion, 10 billion. And of course, correspondingly, they have created that kind of value. Now let's see what has happened in India when some collaboration happened. The one thing is India Infoline Wealth, they got about 1100 crores from a, part, from a private equity fund called General Atlantic Partners in 2016, uh, 2015, sorry. And just look at the wealth created by the employees as well as the existing promoters. This company was valued at about 5,194 crore. When this transaction happened, what was the total mutual fund AUM of India Infoline wealth? It was roughly about 27-28,000 crore. So it was just 40-50% higher than what all of you are already having. So you can imagine if you come together collectively what kind of value you can create. Many times we feel that Nilesh Bhai Yadu ek incidents ho gaya. But that's not true. There are two other incidences which has happened. Ask got investment from Edwind. They were valued at 2,500 crore. Edwind put in 1,000 crore for 40% stake. And Anand Rathi, I believe transaction has happened. I don't know the details, but I'm sure you, all of you will know someone in Anand Ratli and you can figure out the details. So what happened with India Infoline Wealth, what happened with Anand Ratli, what happened with Ask Group is possible if there was a company called MFRT, Private Limited, or MFRT, Public Limited. Can we create amulization of IFAs? Can we create MFRD private limited? Can we create a company which is valued at 1,000 crore? Can we create a roadmap so that this company can become 10,000 crore or 5,000 crore or 3,000 crore? 
in my opinion, this is possible provided we overcome our limitations. What is our limitation? We are today focused only on the asset side of our client. Usko mutual fund bechte hai, uske liye insurance policy side bechte But we are not focused on the liability side. How many of you go and arrange a car loan, a personal loan, a housing loan for your client? How many of you go and arrange a working capital loan, a project loan for your client? I don't think so. Many people will be doing this. You are in this business for three generations. Aren't your consumers borrowing housing loan? Aren't they borrowing auto loan? Aren't they taking down loan? Absolutely. So that's one limitation which we can overcome. And you know, it's not that everyone has to develop that skill set. If this side of the team develops that skill set and gives to this set of group, you automatically build a business. By just coming together, you will double your value because you haven't serviced the liability side. Geographical limitation. Now, let's say you are based in Ahmedabad. Your client will have someone based in Mumbai, someone based in Delhi, someone based in New York. Today, you are not servicing them. If you are an entity, then will you not be able to serve customers in your geographic limitation? My guess is that you will actually start servicing 25 to 30 percent more customers whose references are with you, but today you don't have ability to service. So without doing anything, just coming together, you will take up your customer base by 25 to 30 percent. As I mentioned earlier, based on my limited interaction with all of you, some people are using technology, most people are scared of technology, they are running away. If you develop technology individually, it's going to cost you one amount. If you develop technology for the platform, one, it will have many more features, and second, it will be far less costing. Most important, if individually today you want to sell your business, who will buy and what price they will pay? Most likely you will hand over your business to the next person without monetizing it. But if there is a collectivity, if there is a MFRT private limited, you can easily bring private equity guys, you can easily bring an IPO and get yourself monetized. So you make all immense gain if you create a platform. Today, you are selling mutual funds, majority of you, but you can move into many other asset classes like insurance, and in insurance there is health, there is general, there is auto, there is life, health also. You can go into property, sorry, life and non-life both. You can go into broking, you can go into FX, you can go into perpetual bond, you can go into tax-free bonds. You can become one-stop shop for your customers. Today a customer moves from you because you know you are only selling a mutual fund. But if I have sold him 10 products, do you think any customer can ever move? No chance. There is a model called Wells Fargo model where they pushed more products per customer and they believe that if you push more than three products per customer, either a DMAT account or a credit card or a housing loan or an insurance policy, beyond three product customer does not have ability to move from Wells Fargo. We can probably give 10 products to a customer, they'll become a lifetime customer for you. The second thing, today none of you provide leverage to your customer. An IPO is coming, they all go to borrow from someone else to apply an IPO. But if you are MFRT private limited, you yourself can raise money from all those mutual funds who you are selling. Will any mutual fund tell you no, that no, I won't give money to you? Use that money to provide leverage to your clients. Those guys will take leverage from you. Between 750 people of your team, how many customers do you have? Maybe a million. 
if that's the number of customer base you have, imagine if you start providing them leverage for IP application, for investment, for temporary funding, and someday even housing loan or auto loan or more personal loans or so on and so forth. You can imagine you'll create an NBFC, and you all know what is the valuation of NBFC today. Most of you are offline dealers. You can become with technology online. Today you are mainly on the product side, but you can move into servicing side. Servicing like estate and retirement, services like planning, services like annuity, services like taxation. Today all your clients have to file income tax return. Can you not provide that facility at your end? You are on the asset side of business, naturally you should go to the liability side of business in terms of arranging loans. Today, your relationship is more selling and transaction, but with this kind of products, it becomes advisory and relationship. What you are doing for three generations, all the other people can copy it. What will be the benefits if there is MFRT Private Limited? One, you will be able to sell more products to the client. By servicing the same client, you will generate more revenue out of it. Second, you won't have to retain clients. They'll remain attached to you on its own. Second, your reach, your distribution reach enhances. You won't service customers in your geographic location. You will service across geographic location. You will be able to influence regulatory roadmap. Today you are taker of regulations. Tomorrow you will become setter of regulations. You will adopt technology which will help you leverage your business, which will help you scale your business. You will create a brand which will bring customers on its own to you. You don't have to chase customers. Customers will start walking into you. Most importantly, you will be able to monetize your efforts. You will create tremendous value for yourself and your family by coming together. You will be able to attract and retain talent. Today, majority of you will be facing the problem of retaining talent. But when you have a corporate entity, you will be able to retain talent. And on top of it, coming together, your overhead cost will come down, your operational cost will come down, and this will straight be addition to the bottom line. If you complete the value chain, then the monetization route could be private equity, private equity investment like Anandra, like Ask Group, like India Info Life Wealth, or it could be IPO, which all of these guys will do at some point of time in future, or it could be pure sellout. Some bank will be interested in buying out that business. <coughs> What you will have to let go in order to achieve this, you will have to let go your egos. All of you are today owners. All of you are today entrepreneurs. In MFRT Private Limited, you will become managers or employees. So you will have to let go your egos, which is a very tough thing. But if you let go your egos, the value is 1.25 crore. You take a call. Ego chahiye, 1.25 crore rupee chahiye. Today, you are Batsa of your business. If you come at 11 o'clock to office, no one is going to call you. If you want to live at 3.30 in the afternoon to watch Harry Met Sejal, no one is going to tell you anything. But in MFRT Private Limited, you will have to come at 9 o'clock in office and work till 5 o'clock in office. In MFRT Private Limited, there will be an annual appraisal of yours. In MFRT Private Limited, you will have to be accountable as an employee. So you will be losing your freedom. But for losing that freedom, you will be able to monetize yourself. Today you are entrepreneurs. If you want to sell mutual fund, your choice. If you want to not sell mutual fund, your choice. But as MFRT Private Limited employee, you will be pushed your client ko credit card becho, your client ko mutual fund becho, insurance becho, IPO becho, bonds becho, tax-free bond becho, debenture becho, housing loan becho, auto loan becho. 
So you have to milk your customer. If you can make that transition, if you can make that adjustment, then only MFRT Private Limited can become successful. If your individual egos will keep on clashing, you can continue to remain where you are, and over a period of time, you will get marginalized. The world will move towards platforms. The world will move towards corporatized distribution system. And you will remain marginalized unless until you come together. Now, this marginalization process can take 10 years also and 20 years also. So it's not that it's a threat for tomorrow. But if you come collectively together, there is a far better value. If you remain individual, then probably there is a risk of livelihood itself. What does it require, if I have to summarize? One, it requires vision. It requires leadership from all of you. All of you can't become CEO of MFRT Private Limited. All of you together can't become chairman of MFRT Private Limited. But like today, you have selected one board of you know, trustees or board of advisors for MFRT Private Limited or for MFRT. The same thing you'll have to copy. You need to create your own Tribhuvandas Patel. Second, it will require a painful transition like demonetization. You have gone through demonetization and it wasn't easy. When you're trying to merge businesses, when you're trying to merge practices across different geographic locations, it's going to create issue, it's going to create problem. But if you can come through that painful process, what you will create will be something as good as Amul. And imagine ignorant, illiterate farmers did that in an era where communication was not easy. We are at least talking about intelligent people who are connected with each other on communication devices. It will require commitment. When 1.25 crore is a large amount, it doesn't get created out of thin air. It requires your perspiration. It requires you letting go of your egos. But if you are committed, and majority of things which you already do is the, success, is the ingredients for success over here. Client centricity, no one has to teach you. You are copying it, you are doing it all along. All you have to adopt is to technology, a little bit of your product expansion, looking at the liability side apart from asset side, and so on and so forth. And finally, you require relentless execution. You need someone like Burgess Kurian with you who can help you create that kind of entity, who can help you create your own Amul, who can help you create your own MFRT Private Limited. This what you are today. Some of you will become cool cap, but unless until you come together as MFRT Private Limited, you won't be able to create Ola or Uber or Meru. I'll recommend all of you to see a movie called Manthan. It holds Guinness Book World Record for a movie which was produced by maximum number of people because it was produced by Amul which was owned by 3.7 million farmers. So 3.7 million people produced this movie. No other country, no other movie has ever done that. This is a fantastic story narrated by Girish Karnad and Smita Patil and Nasuruddin Shah. This shows the pain of creating Amul. And it shows how people overcome that pain, how people overcome that process. And it shows the foundation which made Amul so successful. This is standard disclosure. I'm sure MFRT Private Limited is an absurd idea. It's absolutely difficult. All of you will be able to ask 10,000 questions for which I won't have any answer. But please remember, no innovation would have happened if one has to answer all the doubts at the start. 
many of these things you will discover when you begin the journey. So my sincere recommendation will be explore this possibility. Maybe half of you will find it utterly useless. No problem, let the status quo continue. But who knows, half of you may find it useful and then start the journey. And when the other half wants to join you, then sell your shares at a premium so they realize the mistake which they committed. Don't be democratic in giving them entry at the same price at a later date. Charge premium and you will be able to command that premium. I'll end this presentation with a very simple thing. You are aware about perpetual bonds. Yes. These are the bonds issued by banks. Today, IDBI bank perpetual bond is available at 13%. And SBI perpetual bond is available at about 7.5%. Uh, Obviously, this gives far better return than a bank. So a lot of HNIs want to invest into this paper. How many of you sell perpetual bond? I can bet not even one person. How can you sell perpetual bond? You have to copy what India Infoline did. They floated an NBFC because they have an NBFC. In that NBFC, they went and bought perpetual bonds of various banks. And against that, they issued a non-convertible debenture zero coupon, which converted taxable perpetual bond to listed instrument into tax-free bonds. So 8%, 9%, 10% taxable perpetual bond got converted into 8%, 9%, 10% tax-free bond. Now you can imagine how people lined up to buy that paper and how clients are looking forward to such deal from India and for like RM because this product you cannot provide. It can only be provided by someone who has the ability to structure it. Going forward, you will get out-competed, you will get outclassed by such products. Your customers, if they are HNIs, mid-HNIs, will deviate towards these entities because they are giving products which you can't. You can only create that product if you come together. You will never be able to create that product individually, even if you are third generation into this business. So the world is changing, and time has come for you to think about how you should be changing. As I mentioned earlier, this is not next five years threat. Who knows, you could be lucky, you'll survive for another 10, 15 years. But I've just given you one incidence how your customers will walk away from you because of your inability to create such kind of structures. So that's my story. someone's equity is corporate, someone's equity is retail. So there is always a model possible. And everyone won't get a fair share. Someone will have to give little bit away. But it is always possible to structure something if people are open. And there will be so many questions for which we will get answer as we travel. But as long as we have the openness of heart, all problems can be solved. Uh, sir, my question is, Kotak is now promoting Go Digital platform. Already OFA is there, MFU is there. Means, can you say just one minute about this one Go Digital, why you are creating one more platform? So in MFU, if your client details 
are with MFU and they start providing direct option will you like it. Today they are not providing. Tomorrow there is no guarantee. Moment you part with your client details, you become vulnerable. So we created Go Digital, whereby your client details remains with you. I, as Kotak Mutual Fund, also doesn't have access to those details. Your client details are in your name in the cloud. It is not with me. So tomorrow, if I don't like your face, I can't say that I will start approaching your clients directly, which all the other entities which you talked about is capable of doing it. Including? See, NSC is exchange. So they are not mutual fund distributor. But tomorrow, can NSC increase the charges? Then PSSR. So you will be vulnerable to charge, not data. But in other platforms, you will be vulnerable to data. See, what have we tried to create and go digital? We realized that the big IFS are technology safe, the small guys are not. So we said that can we bring knowledge together and create a platform which will help you basic features. It's not Taj Mahal, it's a UDP restaurant. And that's why it is available cheap. That's why it will have implementation issues because I have not retained Infosys to do that work. Infosys will do that work for 25 lakh rupees. I am providing a 20,000 rupee or 25,000 rupees. So this is a feature which is available where data remains with you. Your data is not shared by anyone else. Your control over your client remains with you. And it will help you streamline and adopt technology in a fragmented manner. It's not Taj Mahal straight, it is UDP hotel. But if we all come together, one, we will reduce the cost. And second, collective knowledge put together will slowly, slowly over four or five years build it like Taj Mahal. So it's challenges like uh, Sir, I have a small question uh, to you. It's apart from this presentation. Uh, you know Sochin Tendulkar is the highest uh, one, a century scorer. And Sochin Tendulkar equally has 20-0 out performance. Out of that, Magritte has the maximum time who beat him. Okay. So for your this fund management style, you have same kind of experience, you have outperformed, you have failed. What are the reasons behind, ki where you, where your selection went wrong, where, uh, if you can uh, sure. share something. So in 97 when I started my career, I was the first mutual fund manager in modern history who suffered back then. I went and invested in a company called Viral Filaments, which defaulted. Not many of you will remember. But before MTech Auto and JSPL became fashionable, I had already lost money in Viral Filament. I couldn't understand the credit correctly. That was mistake. But I learned from that mistake until today I haven't lost money ever. The second when I came into equity, I was given one fund. And uh, I came much late with Franklin Equity. <laughs> and all other you know, fund houses were investing into technology and making tons of money and collecting tons of money. So I also said, let me go and invest into Ketan Parikh stock. So we went and invested into Himachal Future, Global Tele. And then we paid the price. We lost money for our shareholders. From that day, we realized that I can't be making the same mistake which a retail investor is making. If they are giving me money, they don't give me money to invest in Ketan Parek stocks. They give me money to invest into quality companies. From that day, quality governance became our prime criteria for investment. Absolutely. Then 2008, you know, in Jan 2008, markets were at 21,000, and in October 2008, they became 8,000. It was almost 60% loss to the investors. It's roughly 60% loss to the investors. 
In Jan 08, I was managing equity of about 30,000 crore. And by October 08, it had become roughly about 12,000 crore. I lost 18,000 crore for investors. And that's where you realize that it's so important for you to communicate with investors. We didn't, you know, lose our comfort. We didn't lose our confidence. I remember in October 2008, there were many days when I have walked into office in the same clothes which I was wearing previous day. Because there was no time to even change clothes. We were communicating with clients during the day and during the night me and my team were working to manage portfolios and keep liquidity and you know pay redemptions on time. That was the learning where communication with client created a connect and that connect helped us survive or reach where we are today. So 2008 experience was all about connect with the customers. There were many people who didn't redeem simply because they said, Nilesh, by redeem current, nay. And that was good enough. Your one no was good enough for people to stay invested. And then you realize the value of that trust. Fortunately, we were lucky by Jan 2009, things started settling down. And by March 2010, everything was quite behind us. So the learning of Last 25 years, if I have to summarize one, we remain connected to your stakeholders. Uh, many of you, either directly or indirectly, are in touch with us through our monthly conference call or through WhatsApp circulation, which we do. There's no need for me to do such things. In fact, many of such things may not be you know, approved under SEBI regulations, but yet we do it because we want to keep that connect on. The second thing is about quality and governance. I can't be making the same mistakes which a retail investor will make. So today in our portfolio, you will never find a Himachal or a Global. All our companies are genuine, all our companies are real. The third, on the credit side, you not only have to measure ability to pay, but also willingness to pay. And we will let go higher return just to ensure that our principal returns back. This are all the mistakes which I have made over 25 years and which I don't intend to repeat over the next 25 years. Thank you. Uh, one more last, uh, because uh, we are running short of time. Uh, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, that will... So, so, uh, so we, we, we were badly hurt in 2008, all of the mutual fund industry, including all the stakeholders. So what I want to ask is now, are we better equipped? Uh, and when, when, we say we, when I say we, it's all the mutual fund industry, are we better equi equipped to sustain such a crisis or to minimize the losses in if a similar crisis happens? So losses we won't be able to minimize. If market falls 60%, I will still fall 40%. But am I better equipped to manage customer? This time answer is yes. We have pushed SIP, we have pushed STP. We have told people what are the risks. If tomorrow China drops a nuclear bomb on India, of course markets will correct. But what's the probability of that happening? If tomorrow US Fed decides to raise interest rates to 14%, our markets will collapse and it will collapse big time. But what is the probability of that happening? So it is more about informed, educative relationship, and which is why I think today we are in a better position to manage the downturn. We saw a small trailer in November, December 2016. Every big Gora was coming and selling their equity lock, stock and barrel. Stock prices were collapsing. And yet, we were able to withstand that pressure because my investors kept on pushing me. They gave me more money between November and December 2016 than what I raised in entire 2014 and 2015. In two months, I got more money than what I used to get in 12 months before that. That gave us ability to withstand. See, ultimately, it's a fight between David and Goliath. FI is on 25%, we own 6%. They are four times bigger than me. I have to run gorilla war with them. I can't take head on them. But 
today in a flow point of view, I'm already becoming double the size of FII. If they put one, I put two. If they put 10, I put 20. If they put 100, I'll put 200. So if it's a flow game, I will win over them. I will need probably seven, eight years when I will take them head on also. But till such time, I will play a guerrilla warfare. So for me, you know, we have taken a choice of not launching too many schemes. So all my funds are like my kids. They will all do well. I don't have luxury of having five funds and pushing one son ahead. I'm like Pandav. I'm not like Kaurav. So all our funds are good. We try to take good care. But because, I'll just give you one example. Some of my peers have growth large cap, value large cap, close ended large cap, dynamic large cap, mid cap focused large cap. Now, if you have so many large cap, one fund will always do well. But I have only one large cap fund, so it will always do average. So we are, to that extent, slightly inferior compared to our peer group because they'll have five funds and one fund they'll put technology one fund they'll put PSU banking, one fund they'll put a consumer auto and so on and so forth. Something will always work out, but you will never know which one. In my fund, I have only one fund. It will always do average, but you don't have to worry about it. So all our funds are like our kids. We try to take good care of them. There are different kind of retirees. Let's say someone who wants to keep money for himself or herself. For them, hybrid fund like Kotak MIP or Kotak Equity Savings will be good. But there might be an uncle who wants to retire, who is retiring, but who wants to give money to his grandson or granddaughter. Now for that guy, Kotak 50 will also be good because he is not looking for himself. He is looking for his next generation. So dividend is a misconception because dividend can be paid out of your own capital. What you have to look at is income coming back to you, not dividend.